Hello and welcome to a tutorial. Uh, this is going to be for people who have never played the game before. So if you have the DLC, you have the option to choose between Space Down and Classic. That's just a matter of whether or not you want a big asteroid or a little asteroid. If you're first playing, even if you have the DLC, the Classic mode is what I would recommend. And you want to start on Terra. That is the one without any crazy traits, story traits, play around with them. I haven't fully played around with them myself. So now it's going to load and it's going to take a little while, but that's okay. Now it's time to pick your duplicates. You start with three. You want a builder, a digger, and a researcher. Now there is a mod that allows you to pick them like I have. Otherwise you'll just have to constantly re-roll them. In addition to the building, digging, and researching, it is a huge bonus to have extra traits like these guys do just because they're gonna be multitasking at the beginning. Now, there are some traits that you definitely wanna stay away from, like dupes with allergies, anemic dupes, narcoleptics, flatulent dupes, and mouth breathers. Once you're happy with what you've picked, just be sure to name your colony whatever you want or randomize it with a little button right here and then get started. So now we begin. Your dupes are in here. And the first thing you want to do is pause the game using the space bar. Zoom out, look for your copper ore, which is the brown stuff. Look for your water. And look for any other biomes that might show up. They have different resources than what you start out with. There's slime over here. That's going to be good for the later game. Look at your temperatures. You want to avoid anywhere that's hot and anywhere that's too cold. Uranium you also want to avoid because of all the radiation, as you can see here. So now let's go ahead and get to digging because that's going to get you your materials to build anything in the base, obviously. So we're going to dig to each side so we can get a little bit of everything. So now if you go to the top right corner and hit priorities, you want to assign the priorities depending on what your dupe is for. Like your builder, you want to have building as their top priority, just double click it. Your digger, you want to do the same thing. Your researcher, you want to do the same thing. Now you want to prioritize digging to your first source of water as you're going to need it for research. Make sure that you have outhouses, which is going to be where duplicates go to the bathroom. This should be the first building that you build. So I like to build three one for each duplicate. And then you want to build a couple of wash basins so they can wash their hands. It's good to keep from spreading food poisoning. Now a little pro tip, if your water is above where your duplicates are, under base, build a ladder and dig above the water because otherwise you're going to have it flood your base. Next, you're going to want to build cots for your duplicates where they're going to sleep at night. So now you want to also build a couple of tiles like this. It's going to help set up a bedroom, which is good for morale. And I don't have enough metal for a pneumatic door. So we're going to get them back to that once we get some copper. Now, if you hit the P key, you'll see a screen like this. You can set your priorities of your buildings. Buildings that you want immediately, you should probably put on priority seven. By default, it's on priority five. So now at the top, you can see the schedule for your duplicates. Now there's four parts to the schedule. There's the bath time where they'll take showers if you have them or do any other downtime things. There's the work schedule where they do most of their jobs. There's also the downtime schedule, which is where they can do whatever they want in the sleep time. Now, generally it is best for you to have three sleep time slots and at least two downtime slots and at least one bath time slots. Keep in mind, the more downtime they have, the higher their morale, which is good for keeping them not stressed out. However, that also cuts into your work. Now, something I personally like to do a lot is start building a ladder down, especially down to other water sources. This is because your duplicates, like humans, breathe carbon dioxide. Now, carbon dioxide is more dense than air, so it's gonna go down towards the bottom. As your colony expands, you're gonna notice a buildup of carbon dioxide, which is why you wanna at least build a little down. Now see here, I hit the Y screen to uh, allow harvest of the plants. That is a way to harvest wild plants until you have some farming of your own. Now that we have our water exposed, we're gonna build a pitcher pump. As you can see those red symbols below the wash basin, that is because it needs water. Something I forgot to mention, so eventually you're going to have to produce your own source of oxygen, obviously, but you see those blue bricky little blocks there that are expelling bubbles? That's called oxalite, 
It will produce oxygen until it depletes itself. It helps very much in the early game to dig those and find as many as you can to help you with oxygen production until you get some of your own. And don't forget when you get a chance to put those pneumatic doors in to close off the space and make it officially a room. Now if you look in the room thing, which is a little bed under the overlays, it'll give you more details on the size. Next you need a research station under stations, you need a manual generator and a battery and some wire to connect it all. This allows you to do research, unlock new technologies and buildings, and help your colony survive. Now just a little pro tip, if you click the pneumatic doors and hit open, the duplicates will eventually open it up. This saves them travel time because then they don't have to open and close the doors every time they walk in. Now if you click your research station, you'll see a whole panel of the research tab. Now there's a lot of options. Personally, I think food is the most important, so go for the meal preparation. As soon as they get it powered up with their little manual generator, Stinky will hopefully get started on researching this stuff. Now once we got all that started, it's time to go to the oxygen tab and click the oxygen diffuser. Now put this wherever you want in your base, but make sure there's plenty of room above it. You want to hook it up to your power supply. And personally, another battery never hurts because these will use a lot more power. Now this is what provides the oxygen to your base early game until you build a self-powered oxygen machine, which is more of a mid-game build. I do have a tutorial on that once you get to that stage of the game. Now oxygen diffusers use algae to produce oxygen. Luckily your starter planet will have plenty of algae to last you a long time, so as long as you are proactive and make sure to start research on stuff for a self-powered oxygen machine, you should be good for a long time. Now the next thing you want to do is start building up to explore more biomes. This is how you find more resources. This is how you find more animals. This is how you find more metal. You want to explore. Always keep your duplicates busy. Always keep them building. Always keep them digging. You never want an idle dupe ever. Now once you've got the first part researched, you can put down a compost. I would highly recommend putting these next to your bathrooms just because it excretes polluted dirt. The compost turns the polluted dirt into regular dirt and it keeps it from producing polluted oxygen which your duplicates can breathe but it makes them sick. So now every three days the blueprint pod will come out with new duplicates or care packages. Now you want to be really careful about picking your dupes. You want to make sure that you are ready for new duplicates and you want to make sure that they're going to be helpful to the colony. Don't get duplicates just because they're there. You want to get strong ones that have skills that you don't have yet and you want to make sure that they don't have any bad traits or bad stress reactions. In addition to the duplicate options, there's also care packages. Feel free to pick those as you wish. For me this time, I picked the snazzy suit just because I didn't really want these duplicates and the snazzy suit does the core around them which is always good for morale. So we'll just go ahead and put that on Stinky. There's really no rhyme or reason. I just figure if he's a researcher. So now we pick our next research, which I'm gonna pick the supercomputer research just so we can get into more advanced technologies. Now, as I go to dig, you're gonna see in just a second that there's a little icon that comes up. There's a shovel with a diamond. That means I need to have a more advanced duplicate to dig that up. So as duplicates get skill points, they will uh, be able to level up and be able to do extra things. So now as you can see here, the room overlay, we successfully built a barracks that gives them a morale boost, which is gonna be good for uh, stress. So now it is time to build our first garden. So make sure it's an enclosed space, that way you can get bonuses. As you can see, I'm gonna set the farm tiles down like such. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the farm tiles down. Then I'm going to have two extra spaces for extra tiles and we're going to go ahead and dig it all out. We still need a duplicate with a higher skill point to dig it all out, but that's okay. Go ahead and inspect it for a data bank. Once they get enough skill points, as you can see in the skill tree, we'll be able to level them up. So now we've got the supercomputer. We're going to go ahead and put that in. And we are also going to make sure to power that up next to our generator. So now it's time to pick our next research. Now, a good option to pick is coal power, as you can see here. However, I really try to get them a high morale, that way I can upgrade their skills as quickly as possible, because as you increase their skills, they get more stressed out if they aren't high enough morale. 
So in this case, I want to start building a bathroom. So I actually picked the, I actually picked this one right here. And now we're going to plant our first crop, mealwood seeds. They make meal lice. They're not the best for your dupes, but they only take dirt. They don't take any water and they'll last you for a long, long time. So this is the big crop that most people use for a beginning game until they have the resources to do other stuff. An easy little trick to make your life a little easier, if you click the farm plot, there will be a copy settings button. You can click that and you can cover all the other farm tiles and it'll automatically plot the mealwood seams as well as the priority you want it to be. Once you see the icon on your printing pod, it is time to pick your duplicate skills. Now this is what specializes your dupes, this is what gives them skill bonuses. Make sure to click the ones that they have an interest in, it gives them a morale boost. You will see that little heart on the side. Once you do that, they get increases to their attributes and they also get access to new buildings, new digging styles, new and added construction. Now it's very important to pick ones that they have an interest in because of their morale. You will see two numbers, your morale and morale need. As long as they are equal or your morale is higher than your morale need, your dupes will not start getting stressed. Once you get them chosen, it will go back to the screen and they will pick their little hats, which I think is the cutest animation of the game. Now it's time for our next dupe. And ranching is a very important thing because you're gonna start getting into coal power. You're gonna need hatches for that. So I found this dupe that has a lot of ranching and their skill, their traits aren't too bad. They can't dig or build, but it's okay because we've got a digger and a builder anyways. So we're gonna go ahead and just print her out. Now generally, you probably don't want to build somebody who has no digging or building, but that's all up to you. And be sure that you build an extra bed for that dupe and try to have it in your barracks to keep the morale boost. Now the nice thing about new duplicates when you print them out is they already come with a skill point, so they are able to get to their skills faster than the dupes that you start with. And don't forget to set their priorities, and if you decide to do different schedules, don't forget to set their schedule as well. Now occasionally while you're exploring, you'll see a little thing called Neutronium, it's little black things. If you hit the priorities, and then you hit the exclamation point priorities, you can actually see what they are, and that will determine if it's something you want to uncover just yet, or if you want to uh leave them for now there's plenty of event tutorials and geyser tutorials to help you decide whether or not you're going to unearth them now or later you may also just see guys are standing alone by themselves those are really good if they're natural gas generators for power however you want to wait until you have the proper gear to access these now generally you at least want to start thinking about this but on what i would say is your southernmost pool of water you want to start building a water pool for your water supply and something to eventually pump all your water into. I decided to do it in this little water thing right here. Now when I have duplicates dig big areas, I generally do it like this in columns of four, just so it's easier, you don't have to build ladders and it makes it to where they don't get themselves stranded. Now it's just something to note as you're digging, you see how the sand falls down as you dig under it? There are some things that do not stay in place, mostly sand when you start out, but just something to keep in mind as you're digging. Now at this point, especially if you have a rancher, I would highly recommend getting the critter ranching because as you get into coal power, you're gonna wanna have hatches to ranch. They expel coal and it will be a never ending supply of coal. Now something you wanna do at some point is build ration boxes in a little box like this because it'll trap the carbon dioxide, it'll keep your food sterile, and it'll make it last longer. Now at some point you probably want to build a farming station which you research with your food. That enables any farmer to, with the crop tending skill to fertilize your plants which makes them grow faster. Now another good research to do is insulate a tile. Insulated tile made out of igneous rock specifically will keep heat from seeping into your base. It will also keep cold areas cold, so once you find cold biomes, it'll keep the cold from creeping into your base as well. It's just all around very strong temperature control. Now, once you get insulated tile researched, I would highly recommend checking your temperatures and going ahead and just building an outline of your base using the igneous rock insulated tiles. Now, it's time for me to build coal power, and that is because you don't want your dupes running on the manual generator forever. They're going to 
waste a lot of labor that way. Now for your researcher, once he gets the skill points, I would highly recommend the field research. It gives him an extra boost in science and it will also help him tame the natural gas geyser once we get to it. Now some people do this sooner, but you want to get jumbo batteries at some point. It stores a lot more power than the regular batteries do, and especially as you build your power grid until you get smart batteries, they are definitely the way to go. Now once you have coal power research, the next one I would recommend is the smart battery because those are going to store power and not waste power, unlike the jumbo batteries. Once you have the smart battery research, be sure to do the brute force reinforcement because you're going to need refined metal for those smart batteries. So we finally got a duplicate with the critter ranching skill, so it is time to build our hatch farm. So now we're going to build a stable. The things that you need are a grooming station, critter drop off, and a feeding station for your hatches. Once you have your critter feeder built, you want to go ahead and click hatch, then click sedimentary rock, because that's really all you're gonna use it for. So at some point, there's no rush on it, you're gonna start seeing long commutes on your dupes, so the next research that you probably wanna build at some point, at your own convenience, are fire poles. They are made out of metal ore, and they are good for fast travel. So let's go ahead and start building a power room. You want this generally at the bottom of your base because the coal generators are gonna produce carbon dioxide, which you wanna keep at the bottom of your base until you get a carbon skimmer. So I went ahead and put some airflow tiles at the bottom. And also note that at the top of the room, I built igneous insulated tiles. That is because they do give off heat and we wanna keep our base as cool as possible. And you wanna go ahead and have a rock crusher built and go ahead and refine some copper that way we can do our automation and smart batteries. Next, we're gonna go ahead, while we're waiting for the copper, to build a mess hall. That's gonna require mess tables, and you want to eventually make it a great hall for the morale boost. That's gonna require a recreational item like a water cooler, and a decor item over 20 like a plant. Another thing about mess halls and great halls is the size. Make sure you have it a small enough size to where it doesn't become a miscellaneous room. So you want to make sure you research automation wire. This will hook your coal generators up to your smart battery to make sure that you're not wasting coal. It will uh, keep the coal generators from producing power whenever the smart battery is full. So for your critter drop off, you want to make sure you pick hatch and hatchling. So what you want to do is go ahead and start building your bathroom once you have the proper stuff researched. You can search for it in the research tree. You need the water sieve researched as well as all the bathroom stuff. Notice I'm not making the room too big because the washroom bonus is only for a room of 64 tiles, I believe. You put your water sieve down, put down a couple of sinks, put down a few lavatories. You want to have at least three, a couple of showers if you want, they're not necessary. And do the plumbing just like this. Don't forget your liquid bridge, that way the, the uh, polluted water doesn't go into the water sieve. Now once you get your smart batteries and your coal power set up and you've got enough refined metal, don't forget to use automated wires to connect the coal power to your smart batteries. That way the coal power doesn't use itself whenever the smart batteries are full. So once you get your washroom set up, you wanna go ahead and put a liquid bridge. Well, not like that. Hold on just a second, let me fix that real quick. You want to put a liquid bridge like this at the beginning. That way the filled up water that comes out of your water sieve does not fill, overfill your bathroom. And then you want to make a secondary pipe to another water pool. It could be where you're pumping water for your research. That way the spare water is going to go somewhere else. Now I would recommend doing it where you're doing your research water just because it's going to be filled with water with food poisoning and you definitely do not want that in your main water source. Now that we have our smart batteries built, you want to fill their parameters by clicking on them. Usually I don't want it to go all the way down to 0%, so I'll put the low threshold at 25% and the high threshold at 99% just because the coal is going to pump a little extra and it's going to fill it up. It saves you just a little bit of coal power. Now here I'm building a power station just because eventually you can build microchips that will enhance the output of your coal generators and make them more efficient, but that is entirely up to you. So eventually you want to build a kitchen. This will allow you to cook food from alternate resources besides meal lice that will boost your duplicate morale. So you want to build an electric grill and an egg cracker for the lime later on in life. The eggshells will convert to lime in the rock crusher, 
which is what you're going to need ultimately for steel once you get to mid game. Now with our coal power on the setup, it's time to get our hatch farm started. So you can either wrangle the hatches with your rancher or what I prefer to do is click the hatch and then click the move to option and move them inside the stable. So what I did here is I built a door with a tile on top. That way the hatches do not utilize the entire space. You do want the room as big as possible to fit more hatches, but if you do this, it will keep the hatches from moving all over the room, which will make your life easier later for getting the coal that they excrete. So you see here, our exploring up towards the top of the asteroid is paid off. We have found a cold biome. Now this is something that you wanna find as quickly as possible, especially for once you build your self-powered oxygen machine. It will keep your oxygen cool and it will keep your dupes happy. So another thing that you want to eventually research and implement into your base is a carbon skimmer. You want to put it towards the bottom of your base just because especially with cold generators, it's going to build up a lot of carbon dioxide which is not going to leave room for oxygen. It takes up clean water and expels polluted water so make sure that you have it hooked up to your main water source. Now one of the last things I want to show you is a liquid lock. This is very important for exploring new areas. It keeps the gases from traveling into your base, it keeps the pressure from maintaining into your base, and it just keeps everything separated. So you want to go ahead and build it something like this with the tiles, that way there is a two space tile for the water to eventually lock. Because of how the physics works, it's gonna build a vertical wall. You will also need two bottle emptiers. You wanna set it on enable auto bottle, and you wanna have it at a higher priority. You wanna keep pumping water into it until it looks something like this even after the water bottles are done. It might take a little while, but it's totally worth it. Your next big goal that you wanna do is a self-powered oxygen machine. I do have a tutorial of that in another video. Feel free to check it out. Otherwise, this should help you survive the first 50 or so cycles and get you set up for success in the early game. This video ended up being a little longer than anticipated, but I'm so glad that you watched all of it. If you like what I'm doing, feel free to check out my other videos, leave a subscribe if you'd like, and check me out on twitch.tv slash teslakitty to see me play live. I play a lot of Oxygen Not Included among other games, but right now Oxygen Not Included is my main focus. So I, again, appreciate you and hope to see you next time.